Good morning. This is your Ray and Griffin. This is my YouTube channel. It's a beautiful morning here in Nunez, British Columbia. And these videos, the books that I write, and all the other things that I produce are ostensibly for my children. And you are cordially invited to listen, read, engage, comment, and do everything you feel the need to do. That being said, this video is about those that and they do represent the vast majority who choose to opt out of having a rational discussion with me. So I would like today to discuss um, how they do that and hopefully it might reveal maybe why they do that. And most of these people are into uh, some form of so-called evolutionary way of thinking, getting ahead of the psychopaths of the world, revealing the deception of the, of, the, of the ball earth, and all kinds of things, none of whom, none of whom, by every demonstration, are in any very great danger of ever entering into a rational discussion with anyone who has any contrary opinion about anything that has become so fashionable for them to believe, as I say, in a communist-styled society, that they, and every generation like them, claim has no real detrimental effect, no great hold upon their individual claim upon some novel form of human freedom or liberation. I'm not making this up. This, what I'm describing, is a disease as prevalent as AIDS or the bubonic plague. It, it, it literally has affected how the brain operates to such a degree. They have found such a refuge on the internet or among those of like-minded people and, uh, and they are met by um, their contemporaries or their mirror reflections across, across the threshold of, of you know, people who take different opinions. If they're red you know, their opponents are blue. If they believe in the flat earth, we're talking about also the people who believe in the spinning ball. If they believe in the Democrats, these people believe in the Republicans. So we're talking about all sides um, whose minds have been so constrained, the refuge so deep, so comfortable, and too comfortable, we might say, the reflex uh, and the biological need to avoid any threat to this refuge in, in the form of uh, any stimul stimulus to, to critical discourse with anyone who happens to share a different opinion than their own. So, so utterly complete that um, there is almost no danger of ever having to subject one's own beliefs to, to any kind of critical circumspection at all. So we have generations of people literally living in bubbles. And a great example of this, of course, is the, the idea of a dome for a flat earth. It's the perfect bubble. It's the perfect neurolinguistic. It's the perfect science fiction bubble. Now, I don't know that a dome doesn't exist, but that's not really material to this discussion. In fact, I've produced papers uh, discounting the, the, the arguments for a dome, but as I say to everyone that I talk to and try to provoke into critical discourse, none of my arguments necessarily mean that I'm right and you are wrong. And none of my arguments or your arguments necessarily mean that I am wrong and you are right. That's not material to the kinds of discussions that absolutely need to be had if we are going to enjoy any but the most delusional or violent sense of freedom, of articulation of whatever we deem the truth to be through our bodies and minds and our lands and family and so forth. When I make this video and I say these things knowing sympathetically, that this sounds like a foreign language, probably to 99.9% .9 of people who will ever see this, besides my children and the one or two other people out there. And my children will know what I'm talking about. It's one of the reasons I've produced the dearth of work that I have, because I see how dangerous is the degeneration how dangerous is the comfortable, I would say, degeneration of, of the human mind um, that in every step of its decline demonstrates sufficient capacities for most of the people 
even deigning to measure what capacities they have. So it just so prevalent, prevalent. It looks exceptional to those who are uh, losing their minds as well. And that's that's what we're talking about here: the losing of the human mind. This is something people talk about: the f losing their freedom, using their guns. They talk about uh, you know losing their internet, losing their their power, uh, losing their local law enforcement, losing schools, losing a lot of things. But people never talk about losing their mind. And they often think maybe that's something that happens when, you're, when you get older. No, it's not. Um, people lose their minds very early on in life. You know, by the end of kindergarten, you've lost a lot of your mind. And there are studies showing that you've lost a lot of your native faculties, particularly of imagination and creative thinking, after kindergarten. Now, some friends of mine... I conducted actually a test that they had learned and applied it to me to see my level of range of critical and creative thinking, creative problem solving, um, that was applied to kindergarten students and those in grade one. And those in grade one had lost like 80, 90 percent, almost all of their uh, creative solving capacities. But it probably didn't look like they'd lost anything to their parents. Right? And the test was applied to me and I actually did quite well. I did many, many times well, better than uh, a lot of people. And and uh, yes, I am bragging. Um, I'm quite happy to know that I've restored some of my problem-solving skills through a number of years of, of dedicated effort of doing that and other things to help restore my function because I've been getting out of the cult, the cult of the schooling system, the cults of everything, politics, the environmental movement, um, every hoax, every, for, every pro and con of every threshold of human revolution, or status quo in the world over the last, you know, 2,000 years. Um, it's, all, it's all just an epic clusterfuck. That's all it is. And it's, it's very enthralling. It's very uh, visceral. It's very dramatic. It, it compels a lot of emotions. Um, you know, people feel like their lives are held on the line, whether or not 9-11 was an inside job, all those kinds of things. Now, I agree 9-11 was an inside job, and I'm personally convinced that there's more evidence for a flat Earth than a round one. And I'm personally convinced that no one has ever set foot on the moon. But that isn't material to this discussion. And I hope you can see the reason for that. It's not material at all. So this channel is for the interdisciplinary study of living creative intelligence and human heritage. And, uh, you know, my friends asked me to supply reasons to solve a particular problem that they gave me in, and see how many reasons I could, how many solutions I could come up with in, say, a minute. And I came up with about, you know, 12 or 13. And most people come up with about two or three. Um, and the, it's the ability, I think, it's a measure, creative problem solving, is the measure of one's ability to make a mistake. It's the measure of one's ability to be wrong. After the effects of this communist system that we've been in and all the other detrimental effects of all the other customs that extol the steady degeneration of our lands, our families, and our, our cellular communication with our children and our land, which is the source of all disease and therefore the solution to all disease and all crime and all mental problems and all, all criminality in every section of our society, um, sorry, I lost the thread of what I was going to say. I just, uh, I just got actually got up a few minutes ago. Ah, da, 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 da. So the mind is losing its mind. That's what we're talking about. And this study that I'm conducting and the books and, and stuff that I write um, is there to help me, it's there to help my children, it's there to uh, report on the way, the world that I live in, the world that uh, I would like to live in, and what my responsibilities I can resurrect from the, uh, the relative impotence that is conferred upon people after so many generations of a communist society that has steadily corroded our ability to think except in parcels of fashionable thoughts that are kept safe 
almost as a rule, as a contract, from all critical scrutiny, whether they happen to be right or not. Um, the first thing that I did when I became more and more convinced that the earth was flat was I threw myself into popular YouTube channels and debated people who were absolutely convinced that the earth was a ball. I did this for weeks. And I debated, and I debated, and I debated, and they came up with every single reason that they possibly could, from my own mental health to um, what scientists say, and all kinds of things, to you know circumnavigation of why they thought that I might be wrong. And I just kept doing it, and, and uh, it wasn't about being right. It was about taking a look at what they were saying and whether or not that was enough justification. But at the same time, their failure to justify a ball earth did not mean that the ball earth didn't exist. Right? But the whole time, I had to produce rational arguments. It was the only way I found to enjoy myself online. Because I don't understand people who just make up little insults or stick with one uh, form response almost. It must be right and you're stupid. Um, that is 99.9% .9 of the people that I engage with. And so people are basically just forming these contracts with one another so that they never, ever, ever, ever have to exercise certain parts of their mind to do with creative problem solving and applying certain kinds of critical scrutiny, which means exposing yourself to people who disagree with what you believe, no matter how much you believe it. And just pathologizing people and saying, well, they don't believe the earth is flat because they're sheeple and they've been hypnotized or, you know, and they're just stupid or anything like that, of course, is completely fallacious, right? It's as fallacious as ball earthers or anyone else saying that you only believe the earth is flat because, you know, you're, you don't have enough scientific literacy. That, that's fallacious, right? You make your argument, it's either credible or it's not. You can either convince people or you can't. Um, I don't know one way or the other, and I've decided that it's just such a, it's such a big world. Uh, I'm not sure if we're qualified mentally, uh, necessarily, uh, given the depravity of our recent ancient history, to make any firm distinctions about the shape of this earth or the cosmos. But I think it's fair to speculate, and again, I think there's some good arguments been made that the earth is a flat plane, and geo uh, fixed and, and all that kind of thing. But that's not, again, material to this video. Under several generations of a Marxist education system, people have more reasons today than ever before not to think or not to engage in critical discourse, the only threshold between conscious awareness and the dulling of every surviving standard of good or true or free. I know this because I run into them every day. Here is my list of common reasons provided, like notes to get out of gym class, why people do not have to engage me in critical discourse. Or, let's not justify this by romanticizing it, why you or I am a poo, -poo head. And I'm not kidding, and this list is growing every day. This list right now that I'm, I'm going to read you um, was actually constructed from one conversation that I had yesterday. In one single conversation uh, that happened to invite, you know, a dozen different people, a dozen, fifteen different people. These are the reasons given why they didn't have to talk to me about anything that I'd actually said. This is common every day. This is 99.9 .9 or maybe even 100% of the time. Number one, you are not awake whatever that means. Number two, you are not spiritual, whatever that means. Number three, you are a shill, that is, I'm being paid to just be disagreeable. <laughs> okay. Good money if you, can, if you can get it, I guess. Number four, you are a troll, which I'm guessing is someone who just gratifies the incredible uh, time they have on their hands by making a nuisance of themselves on other people's channels or in other people's posts, which is Yes, I guess people that disagree with you are a nuisance. And therefore, anyone who disagrees with you, I guess, is just trying to be a nuisance on purpose, and that's all that they are. I mean, you see the level of dulling of the mind here. Um, I think that not thinking is a nuisance. 
I think that not engaging in critical discourse is, is mildly unsettling, uh, I think, for the sake of generations of our children. But that's just me. Because apparently I'm not awake or spiritual, or and I'm a shill. You are a troll. You are on drugs, and they want some. You are just copy-pasting. I get that a lot, too, because I'm able to form complete sentences and that kind of thing. Number seven, you are old. Uh, number eight, you edit your comments I actually got uh, because I edited them. They couldn't possibly be worth reading. Um, and uh, think about the how much that person is straining, right? I mean, this is a little bit funny, but it should be scary. This should be really striking you in the heart if you understand what I'm saying. We're, we're looking at a mental illness that isn't even being addressed by even the so-called uh, awake people in our society, right? Who claim to be on the vanguard of the flat earth revolution of peace on earth, right? This, this isn't being addressed at all. Why would they, right? Because they're enjoying their own version of it. Um, and you are asleep is another one. So, um, you know, this is all a dream, I guess, and I'm, I'm catatonic right now as I speak to you. Um, and this, of course, said by people who are, you know, racing at breakneck speed to becoming the, the latest versions of, of living, catatonic, um, non-thinking, extremely free, extremely liberated conspiracy theorists. And uh, this is unsettling to me, to say the least. Um, I will, in a moment, bring up a couple examples to give you of, a co I think, people, commenters on my videos or, or anywhere else that, to me, embody a number of these things in a single post or in a single comment. And you'll get some idea of how, how prevalent this, this disease has become. I'm not even sure what to call it. I mean, uh, words like stupidity, ignorance, um, self-hate, and low self-esteem seem to seem to be kind of weak definitions, I think. They're palsy, they're not, they don't really cover, I think, what's going on here adequately. So, what I'm arguing is that people through the school system and just about every custom of our society, whatever family or distinction you may have enjoyed throughout your life, have been farmed or been conditioned to think they are thinking and to think all possible safety for engaging what they think of as critical thought is contingent upon their being protected and help other people protect themselves from what used to be considered critical scrutiny and critical discourse. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that though there is a lot of abuse that exists online, that even when they are confronted by critical discourse, it generally becomes dismissed or relegated to some form of organized abuse of their person, of their beliefs, and thus of everything to which they aspire in their entire definition of what would make people free or relieve suffering in the world, and so forth. And these are ambitious projects, to be sure. And the more ambitious your project, you should be asking yourself, how do we subject this to a proportional scrutiny, given the state of mind that you see with everyone else besides yourself in terms of mass psychology, the primary effect of which, of course, or the primary symptom of which is that you, you don't think you're being affected by mass psychology. So the communist school system works very, very well. Uh, it doesn't have to teach you things, it just has to throw enough stuff at you on a daily basis that you become inured to the simple uh, collective reflex, reflex of producing what is asked of you at all times by the authority and then enjoying uh, the alternate reward or ridicule of your ability to do so. And of course, over time, it really doesn't matter if you're not able to because everyone is passed through anyway. And you leave with, um, without even knowing it, with having gained the religious belief that if enough people think the way you do, then you must be right. And then any kind of combination of facts or truths, uh, irregardless of any kind of proportional scrutiny, are the only way to take society or any segment of society into the bright, bright future 
of the rising communist sun. And this is pretty much 100% of my experience of people online, on the internet, which is, I guess, some not inconsiderable segment of the entire demographic of people who deign to make this world a better place through various conspiracy theories like the flat earth and, and so forth. So, let me see here. So, I'll read you a couple. I'm not going to read you a lot. So, this is from the Patricia Steer effect. It's one that I, I think I just got yesterday. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to remember the link, but if you just go about 10 videos back, I think it's called the Patricia Steer effect. And uh, it got, as I predicted, uh, 10, or, 10 or more times views uh, within a day or two probably simply because it had the word Patricia, Patricia Steer in it, um, for whatever that's worth to you. And he says to me, uh, this is Soul Rebel. So wherever you are, you know, I hope that uh, you've got your head in a book somewhere and, uh, and you're maybe learning something new today. Uh, because I'm not sure if, you, if you've done that in, in a good long time. And uh, I was there, I went through the education system. So learning how to think is and how you want to think, which is personal to you, is more important than learning what to think. And I think flat earthers and conspiracy theorists, they're, they're quite happy to learn new what's to think that support some sort of dramatic regeneration of the world around them as they confront all of the ignorant, uh, you know, heretical or uh, infidels of the, of the people dragging them down from their, from their summit of human reason than it is to learn how to think. Um, regardless of who may be right or wrong. And so you're getting generations of people that think they're operating in a, in a kind of uh, a unique, you know, little burgeoning world of truth and freedom than actually just the same kind of fart bubble that's coming out of just about every solar orifice uh, and institute in the world under whatever pretense. It doesn't matter if it's conspiracy theorists or the medical establishment or, or the different schools of political thinking and ideologies. It, it really is all the same, um, evolutionism and so forth. But, of course, all the different cults are going to have occasion to you know, violently criticize other cults and they're going to affiliate themselves with other cults. The Flat Earth seems very closely affiliated with Christians whereas the evolutionists are, are much more affiliated with atheists. Now ask yourself why that is, and it's not as obvious as you may think, um, because all of them are actually lower order cults of the same overarching religion, which is the, the godlike concept of a world where human beings pretty much um, have never really meant to not suffer as much as they do, and whose thought remains considerably uh, competent at addressing any of the problems of the world if they have enough of the facts or the truths and they can summon enough authority, enough influence over those who aren't as enlightened as they are. So these are all very similar cults. They're, they're just basically lower order, white order cults of the cyber satanic systems that govern the uh, brain specific images that generally rule over the life of man and everything that he constrains his solutions to his own suffering. Two, usually in a way that produces more suffering, but avails him of a more sophisticated uh, personal and social delusional psychosis. And I've gone into this um, exhaustively in so many different areas of my posts and my videos that I'm not going to just go into specifics every single time that I mention it. It's just another part, I think, of a basic dimension of a rudimentary education in the world that we live in. Um, that's what I'm providing for my children, and you, of course, have every opportunity to provide what you would like for yours. Soul Rebel says, Dude, you need to have a spirit awakening. I see that you're having some issues with ego. Oh, that's another one. I've got to add that. It's my just my ego. Uh, yeah, I, I have one. <laughs> so that's, that helps out. That's helpful. Um, and by the way, it's obvious you're a flaming shill. Sorry, bro but I call it like I see it. Well, I'd be a little apologetic too if I, if I spoke like that and 
and I was proud of a mind like that. And I'm an old coon, he says. Wow, so I wouldn't be bragging about that either. So you've had an entire lifetime to think about sufficient thought for your children, and that's all you could come up with after a, what, 30-minute video um, of, of rational arguments. Think about that. And this person is not unique. This person is by no means unique. And I do get older men actually making comments like this. And I actually thought that it was a 16-year-old guy who smokes a lot of pot. Um, so they give you a lot of information. It's very helpful. Um, and then you can kind of see how it's not hard for me to come to some of these at least tentative conclusions. And if you're interested, my response was, sorry, it is the policy of this establishment to never read or even attempt to decipher anything that begins with the word dude. Which, uh, <laughs> you know, there's not really much to read there, is there? So, and I would, let me just... La da 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 I want to add, just working on this right now. Um, you have problems with ego. I'll call it problems with ego. Okay. I'm not quite sure how that all works out. Some people think you need to lose it. Some people need, you just have a, yours is too big. So the size or existence in terms of size or mere existence. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Okay, so you are asleep. Oops. Bear with me here. Bear with me, my 10 viewers. We shall get ourselves through this moment in time. Okay. Oh, that wasn't right. La da 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 If I only had a brain. That's what I would put as the theme song to this video. And one more, I would be remiss. Okay, so so I uh, I'm getting uh, criticism from a number of people here. So I write as I think I, my moral duty to write quite often is, does anyone reading this have any arguments about anything that I or anyone has actually said? If not, I hesitate to inform you that you are not, logically speaking, in the best possible position to make any very definite claims about the intelligence or integrity or mental health or of anyone. In fact, the only people who would be in such a position would, by definition, be bigots or psychopaths, people who only require the most rudimentary or incidental provocation to cast the most damning generalizations upon anything or anyone. Now, as proof that people either can't read or are not choosing to read, um, someone says to me, uh, oops, his name is James Higginbotham, says, he replies, so many of your posts are, quote, edited, and they are still incoherent dribble. I've already attempted to inform him that the word he's looking for is drivel, not dribble, but um, even when I told him, he doesn't seem interested in, in changing that uh, use of the English language. Um, again, these are little things to some people, but they add up to actually big things when, um, in the grand scheme of it all. 
So he's, of course, demonstrated the argument that I've just made. So he's missed and made my point, which is pretty much as a rule. In fact, I should leave that somewhere. Uh, I say, you are criticizing me for editing something in a couple minutes that you could not write in a lifetime. It is a shame you cannot understand a single word being said, or you could have avoided placing yourself in an awkward position. And I quote, does anyone reading this have any arguments about anything that I or anyone has actually said? If not, da 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 da. Uh, the only people who would be in such a position would, by definition, be bigots or psychopaths, people who only require the most rudimentary or incidental provocation, such as the fact that I might edit one of my comments, to cast the most damning generalizations upon anything or anyone. That is, it is just incoherent dribble. So these are not, you know, rational arguments you're, you're watching here. This is not the, the height of humanity. Indeed, actually, it is the height of humanity. It's pretty much the, the foothill that we've been pressed down into by a communist education system. And one of the greatest effects as of mass psychology is you don't think it's affected you. You think you're immune to it. Um, people grow up in Christian cults, they grow up in atheist cults, they grow up in Jewish cults, they grow up in Islamic cults, they grow up in evolutionary cults, they grow up in political cults, the cult of democracy, the cult of independence, the cult of the American dream, which is basically just glorified ways to cannibalize the dreams of your own children in perpetuity. That's all that it is. But, you know, these are all charming. And at the end of the day, the only argument you have for any of them is that it feels charming. It makes you feel good. And... Things do. Drugs do. A lot of I've met people who are drug addicts and they like it. But it becomes more than just feeling good. It's, it makes you more liberal, more educated, more... You've lost some of the unnecessary inhibitions morally, sexually, uh, intellectually in the world, which is, of course, again, this is an example of, of the, uh, the drug cults that substantiate all the other cults in the world. All of the liquor and drug cartels run through the CIA and other organizations in the world want to produce this very kind of mind, whether it's through drugs or the education system or the various cults, and each of which might have certain truths and might have preserved certain amounts of wisdom. They might produce certain philanthropic behavior, or say it's Christian or Islamic outreach and so forth. Um, and, uh, and so, again, this is not an A or B. It's an A to Z examination of what's happening to the human brain. Um, so it's not that people aren't doing good things, it's that they've lost a standard of how to operate with less peril um, and less um, neglect and violence to a human intelligence that then comes to adopt the same or worst kinds of uh, state cults as the only means to human happiness, as though the detrimental effects of doing this for countless generations is somehow endemic, it's nothing to do with them, um, it's just the sick, it's genetics, it's logistics, logistics of running a government, it's everybody else, it's all the blob heads, it's all the people who believe in the official story of 9-11, and all these kinds of things. In a Marxist society, generating rebellion is really important. It's really important that you're, that a large contingent of the population um, is completely aghast and has absolutely no faith in, in, in a lot of different authorities, and yet places into authority people who are just as or not more comp, co incompetent or inept than the people that they wish to decry. Um, this is all helps the system. So if you just get up one day and you believe the Earth is flat and you see that NASA is like pulling the wool over your eyes, you're doing it actually, ex and that somebody is worried that you believe this and that it's going to hit the mainstream, and we're just going to wake the world up, and, every, and peace is going to break out like flowers in the springtime, um, you're doing exactly, exactly what the darkest forces in the world want you to do. You're, you're behaving exactly as predicted, um, as a demographic. And you'll notice that every single cult in the world begins as a rebellion against some other aspect of a cybernetic society, right? in each of whose members are convinced as a contingent that they have secured some greater level of understanding of the world around them and that it, that world would be safe if they could just convince other people how right they are. And this is perfect for a communist society. It's perfect. Um, you've got a million cellular or satellite human beings, all of whom are hooked up to the mother feed if you will, which is a, a complex of 
completely unquestionable beliefs in some combination of facts or truths that lead all human beings to some form of liberation. And even should they succeed in doing so, that liberation is so completely distorted from anything like a truly human existence as to bear absolutely no resemblance to anything that any newborn child would ever actually want their, children, their parents to subject them to. So I'm just going to add number 11. I am both missing and making your point. There we go. Ooh. Save, and I'm just going to add... Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Good, excellent. So it's, uh, I uh, record just about all of my interactions online, as some people know, because um, I consider myself an anthropologist of sorts. I think it's really important to record these things, funny or ironic or strange or unsettling as they may be. Um, they do remain the way things are. This is, um, I learned a lot in life by just looking, what am I seeing? What am I observing? What am I experiencing? And, uh, every day and like uh, a zookeeper dealing with the scat of the gorillas um, I've become kind of used to it it doesn't bother me so much anymore um, this is these these people are functioning at a no higher level and maybe it'd be lucky if they are and we're talking about 99 percent of people online maybe people we pass by every day at about a level of maybe uh, oh little birdies hey guys rabid hyenas or scatological baboons. You're just flinging the, uh, the sort of defecant of, of all that you have lost and all that you have reduced yourself to doing in order to gain anything that even resembles freedom at all costs at one another. You're, uh, you know, you're projecting your own ignorance onto someone and then inflicting them with it. And whatever result you get proves that you are right and that people are ignorant and uh, you have to, you know, get deeper, deeper into your cult slash social club, be it the Flat Earth or 9-11 Truth or the Moon Hoax or Demo uh, Democrats, Republicans. You know, I was listening to a guy the other day saying, you got to vote, you got to get out and vote. We're never going to, you know, and Bernie Sanders getting on camera and basically saying giving people, these people who are in a state of perpetual anxiety and suspension of critical thought, everything that they want. You know, we want to demilitarize the police. We want to create a, a police forces that are as diverse as the communities that they serve. Uh, every time a black man is shot, we should have a uh, judicial inquiry um, and all these kinds of things, which all sound extremely sensible. So it's giving people everything they want. Now, even if they don't get it, it doesn't matter because they've been convinced in a communist society that there at least was the possibility of them getting it. And that's all that people need. They hang on a thread of what is possible, and particularly a possibility completely cemented with some authority, right? Um, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent are, are, are waiting for some authority to say, yes, the earth is flat, and to vindicate their beliefs, to get vindicated, right? If you're waiting for vindication, if you're waiting for it to hit the mainstream, you're going to be waiting a long time. And not only that, but even if it did, it wouldn't actually matter. Because vindication is not a criteria of expanding our conscious capacity for any life to which or with which we aspire. It just isn't. Getting other people to think what we think even though that's what we learn in a communist system, is not really a part of a healthy society. Right? I don't have to convince you to think the way I do. I don't even have to be right. I don't have to know anything that is true. I don't have to know all the facts about 
you know, the Paris shooting or about Sandy Hook. I'm interested and that and knowing facts and thinking about them and grinding them away and maybe chewing the fat with other people can be helpful. It's all helpful, but it's not essential. It's not completely necessary for me to engage in critical discourse. Right? It's not actually helpful to a society just to have people believe the same thing or think the same thing or have all the right facts. Now, these are helpful in lots of situations, but actually forwarding our capacity for critical thought is not really that essential because people are always going to come to their own conclusions anyway, and the conclusions they come to are always transcendent to the facts because human beings, to, right, to reduce things to the facts is to reduce human beings. And people who have been reduced or denuded of their humanity think that everything is about the facts and knowing the truths. Here's the proof of the moon hoax. Like, I, I'm interested in the moon hoax. I'm interested in the flat earth. But I don't bludgeon people with what I've learned about the flat earth. Rather, I'm interested in the invisible components of their own lives and minds. And that's what people are occupied with. You come to the average person and say, you want to talk about the flat earth? They don't care. Um, they want to be, they're interested in who they are, interested in their children, their feelings, their trauma, their aspirations in life. And yes, maybe believing what you believe, if you're a Christian or a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness or a Flat Earther, when you're all the same person, essentially, maybe that would help them enjoy all those things. But that's a presumption that you're making, right? You're, you're actually um, uh, making demands upon the mind of this other person. You want to provoke them to think the way you think. And that's fine in the world of maybe online rhetoric, but on a day-to-day -day social basis, right, it doesn't matter what facts people have because people transcend the facts. The values of the human mind, and I say here a truly human, our full psychology is so much more than the facts, right? right? Your life is not a combination of facts. In a communist society, sufficient facts or truth, whether it's by the state or because the state is incompetent through some other uh, splinter group of the state, whether they call themselves anarchists or capitalists or democrats or flat earthers, is, is a combination of that equals freedom and peace, right? But that has never equaled freedom and peace. In fact, doing that and constraining your life to that always degenerates and helps all the darkest forces you always feel qualified to expose, as though exposing them means anything to them or to anyone else in any but the most delusional basis. That's a Marxist society. Okay? No combination of facts is sufficient for the whole psychology of man. No combination of facts. The psychology of man goes into the level, sort of the Empyrean, but a normal level of critical thought, of finding the turn of people's minds, and examining the turn of your own mind, which goes far beyond the sum of the facts whether you happen to believe one point or not. It's reasoning and logic is not just connected or constrained to facts. Reasoning is of the spirit. It is of the ineffable uh, or the ephemeral uh, mental being of a human being immersed in the ephemeral as physical dimensions of the cellular intelligence of an eternal cosmos. There is the whole psychology of man. There is the human experiencing the complex of values that spring forth like every new hour or every new season from a strata of unbounded intelligence, creative intelligence, reflected by every orbit and organ in heaven and earth, which is why it's related, why the seasons and the phases of the moon and all these things affect our organs. As it moves to the spring or the winter, we start to feel different depending on the purity of our blood and of our way of life because our, we're changing and transforming and morphing just like the world around us every day and doing that exceptionally well, even under the fairly depraved conditions in which most of us not only live, but continue to subject ourselves beyond all reason, all proportional critical thought, which is how we actually protect and how we actually articulate the incredible value of the invisible components of our mind or our soul and transmit that, what we have learned from our pain or from our wisdom or from our contact with life and one another, something of the eternal values and something of our respect for a way of life where man has never needed to suffer. That is the basis of reason. That is the basis of, of, uh, of human existence. It's the basis of morality. It's the basis of agency. 
So this is what these videos and my, what my work occupy themselves from. Um, it's not to part ways with the facts, but to question a, an however acquired, traumatically acquired need to constrain anything that deigns to call itself human freedom, freedom from the government, freedom with the government, it doesn't matter, um, to a combination of facts, like the earth is flat and this is why, and so forth. And when we do that, we can start to examine our agency, such as how did we get in this position in the first place, regardless of the shape of the earth, or because of it, either way. Um, what are our responsibilities to our children? And what does it say when we observe the scale of human suffering that has been going on for so many generations, if we never actually needed to suffer as much as we have, and we've always had, and we continue to maintain, or we would not feel as much pain as we do, the capacity to make better choices, to avoid a largely self-inflicted thoughtlessness that has become compounded over its inveterate articulation and protection through one different cult or generation of another or another over thousands of years, all of whom believed they knew that the government was bad for all the right reasons and just how to make the world a better place. It doesn't matter if you're the signers of the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution or you're three or four people huddled together online um, getting po making popular videos about the flat earth. It is literally the same thing. Ask yourself, what are these people producing aside from a combination of facts? Aside from proselytizing the idea prevalent in every death cult in the world that any combination of facts somehow equals liberation for anyone who's worth talking to. And think about that. Um, that I'm going to leave that video at that. What do we have here? It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. But God bless. Be safe. Keep it human. Enjoy this gorgeous day. I'm going to head out. I'm enjoying it. I thank everyone for their comments. The worst ones, I think, are the most constructive at this point because I've long resolved, resigned myself to the fact that we're dealing with an extremely uh, virulent human mental illness at an, at an ever-growing pace or scale. And we are capable of observing it. Um, people do maintain some surviving sense of their humanity. And I would simply invite them to use it, put it to use, because agreeing with people is not the basis of our future. Um, answering the demands of our unborn children and using every occasion to provoke our faculties of reason and our each of our supremely personal um, knowledge, understanding, and experience of the ephemeral ephemeral dimensions of what makes a human being a human being and the connections that we have with one another that that is the, the primary interest of most people and I think even those in the flat earth or any other cult except they they constrain it to proving the facts that's what makes it such a you know when people are hurt they want to avoid those psychological components of their life that admit as any extreme uh, growth of conscious capacity admits the things that have beset them the things that have have stepped in the way of their spiritual being or of their mental being or of their psychological being as a native human child. And so they would rather engage in social groups where they constrain what they still feel as their inner psychological being to sharing and proving facts and creating walls or sandbags against the ignorance of those who don't know their particular combination of facts that actually are not material whatsoever to resolving ourselves to the best level of interaction of cells in a body or people in the world, that of the cellular intelligence of the whole psychology of man, which will never be reduced, except at great cost, um, to a combination of facts, as is done and as is de rigueur for a communist society. So go back to the beginning of the video if you wanted to see, but I've basically created a list here uh, under several generations of a Marxist education system, people have more reasons today than ever before not to think or not to engage in critical discourse, the only threshold between conscious awareness and the dulling of every surviving standard of good or true or free. I've made hundreds of videos criticizing the flat earth, I've published an enormous number of papers, and I have yet to have anyone supply a rational argument about anything that I've actually said. Now you would think, if you were interested, if you're in any cult, in actually generating um, a larger range or scale of personal thought 
and coordination of, of thought and society, that that would be something that you would be tremendously enthusiastic in doing. In fact, I know that I would, um, assuming that the person could actually make arguments and wasn't about the business of simply being abusive in order to protect one's own cult-like beliefs. I know this because I run into them every day. Here is my list of common reasons provided why people do not have to engage me in critical discourse or let's not justify this by romanticizing it, why you are a poo-poo head. And I repeat, number one, you are not awake. Number two, you are not spiritual. You are a shill. You are a troll. You are on drugs and I want some. You are just copy-pasting. You are old. You edit your comments. You are asleep. You have problems with ego in terms of size or mere existence and I am both missing and making your point.